Welcome back, everybody, to Hayes Tech and Ron Reviews. Uh, we are here today with my uh, with my grandson Noah, and we are going to show you all about what are we going to what are we going to show him today? The uh, Luger. Yes, the Luger P08. And what war was this thing in? World War II. Yes, 1941. It was made by Mauser. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to get into this, and we're also going to tell you a little bit about that Mauser too. So that's the Mauser model 1914, but we'll get into that after we come back. And as always, remember to like, share, and subscribe. You hit that notification icon to get a notification of my videos as soon as they're released. That way you don't miss any of them. Again, this is my grandson Noah. Um, he's. I wanted him to help me with this video, and as you guys can see, the difference. He's he's 13. 13. All right. Um, again, we're talking about the Luger, Luger P08, and this is the Mauser model 1914. Yeah. Um, the Mauser model 1914 went through quite a few different stages. And this is like in the middle of the stages. This isn't the finished version. The finished version had a couple refinements done to it. This is not a uh, firearm that's worth any money. It's got a big crack right here. Uh, actually, it's not a crack. It's a break completely through the slide. It goes all the way through the slide here. So, but we may actually get into tearing this down. But what we're really talking about, hold that up and um, hold that up right no, well, you can hold it. There you go. This is a 1941 uh, Mauser made uh, Luger P08. Uh, it's chambered 9mm. It would be 9mm Parabellum. Uh, and the way we know that it is Mauser, it's got some markings on the top that says D DHF or DVF. Sir, BYF. BYF. Uh, BYF lets us know that this was made in Belgium. Uh, no, this was made in Germany in the Mauser factory, and it, it'll, it'll say right there. Uh, it'll say 41 up here, that tells you what year it was made. Uh, and then if you look at the serial numbers, which are right here, and I'll be putting some really close-up high-definition pictures in toward the end so you guys can see all of this. Uh, but this number right here is a serial number, it's also right here. And that you can actually look up in Mauser's uh, website, or the, uh, there's a... a a really good website. I'm going to put a link in the description below. Uh, if you guys have a Luger like this, if you're lucky enough to have one, look the numbers up. It'll give you the year, manufacturer, if it was sir, if it didn't serve in the war, uh, and all information like that. So hold that up. I'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, this definitely it was issued to the the army, and the way uh, that you know that is because on because right here it's got. Uh, Eagle or the uh, the military inspectors uh, uh, inspection seal of approval, uh, which is their the uh, German Warbird. It's in a couple different places on there. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, uh, it's actually got in white on the uh, left side of the frame right here. Um, it's got safe. I can't read German, but it means uh, it means it's safe. It's safe. That it's safe is what that means. Again, it's a 9mm Parabellum, uh, or my 9mm Luger, which is, this is the gun that we got that term from. These guns are in high demand, but there are not very many of them around. Very, very few. Now, they made millions of them, and I mean millions, but a lot of them were destroyed in World War II. A lot of them went to Russia, and nobody, you know, and that's it. But the ones that did come back in America, uh, what happened was, they gathered up all these firearms, they threw them into a pile uh, after World War II was over, and 
the, what the GIs would do is they'd go grab souvenirs. So they would grab a gun, an extra magazine, like that. Even though it didn't match the gun, they would grab an extra magazine. If the gun didn't have a holster, they would just grab one. This here is a police holster. Uh, it is period. It is period correct, but it's not. Period, it's not correct for that gun. This gun would have been issued with a an army holster. If this would have been a World War War World War One gun, it may have been issued to the cavalry. And on the back here, see these little slides. These little. Go ahead and look on the back of this. The grip. Do you know what these slides are for? No. These grooves on the back of the grip. Go ahead and show them the grooves. These grooves right here on the back of the grip were made to put a stock. So you would have a little short stock that you put to your, your, to your shoulder, which would make it really nice to shoot, really nice to stable. So it's pretty cool. Um, I can't think of anything else to go over on that, except bluing. Uh, the bluing's in probably, I would say, 80%. Uh, it is original. Show them how to cock it. You have to pull up and back. That's the toggle system. It's tough. Oh, wait, 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 maybe we have to have it fire. Now I'll try it. Up and back. Yep, it has to be in the fire position. You pull up and back at the same time and just snap it forward. Yep, just like that. Um, and that's it. These magazines hold eight rounds of nine millimeter. And we do not recommend that you uh, put eight plus one in. You just want to put eight in, the, eight in the magazine. And when you're ready to go, cock it and you're good to go. So when we come back, we are going to go ahead and show you how to field strip this. That's a little tedious, but uh, but I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and uh, and get through it. So, what do you say we go ahead and field strip this? We are going to go ahead and get into this. First thing I wanted to do is I wanted to take this ruler. Uh, these things are nice to have, and basically I want to set this down like this, where I can read the numbers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and measure the barrel. And the barrel is the barrel is four inches. So this is a four-inch barreled model. The first thing you want to do, obviously, Noah, is go ahead and just double check again that that is unloaded in the video, so they can show you, so show them how to toggle that back. Okay, pull up and back at the same time. Beautiful. Okay, let her go. So this is this is definitely unloaded. Now, one thing you want to remember. Whenever you go to field strip this, this has to be in the fire position. If you see, if you see the safe or uh, it's safe showing, it is not going to field strip. You have to have this in the fire position. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you want to push back on the barrel. You want to push back that way until it stops. When it stops, and it's it's tough. Once it stops, you want to push down on that. Okay. Now it will come forward and this little side plate is going to come off right here. Go ahead and take that off. Now you want to just go ahead and slide this right off of the gun. So now you have the bottom half and you have the top half with the toggle and the barrel. So this is the barrel, the slide, and the bolt. So to get the bolt out... Well can we measure the barrel when it's out? Well, I could, but it would be the same if the barrel was on it. So what I want to do is I want to take the firing pin out. Before we pull this apart, um, on the inside of this, and I'm not sure if it's going to focus correctly, but right here there's a little screw. That screw you have to push in and then rotate counterclockwise a quarter of a turn. So right now that screw is, is uh, facing straight up and down. We want it to be facing uh, horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and take it out when I'm when I have the bolt out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slide this bolt out. Before I can do that, I have to pop this pin out. So what you want to do is just push on it with your finger. It only it comes out this way and it'll only come out one way. So push on it like that. Take your finger, pull on it. You want to hold everything together. It's going to it's under pressure. Put the pin out. Now we can just slide the bolt and everything right out the back, just like that. Okay? That is your bolt and your barrel. If you want to look down through there to see if it's clean. Now, what I want you to do here now is see that now. Now I can probably show them this. Okay, see that screw right there? That's got to be pushed and it's got to be rotated counterclockwise. Okay, so what what you want to do with this now is be careful because this is under extreme pressure. Um, you want to 
push in on that and rotate it. Over here, I don't want you to get me. Yeah, so I'm going to show you and then I'm going to let you do it. If you take and push in on this and oh, rotate it in. like that, okay. Oh. So hold that. One hand, hold it to hold the screwdriver. Now it's got a spring in there and it's going to fly out. So try to get ready to capture it. So he's just, he's just pushing in and he's rotating it until you got to rotate it until it's this way. It'll unlock and it'll start coming out. There you go. That's it. And go ahead and pull that out. That's the spring. That's the firing pin. Go ahead and let's let everybody see that. I'll put the firing pin in the spring in my hand. And there's your firing pin and your firing pin spring. Go ahead and bring the bolt up here. Let's take a look at the bolt and the toggle. And that's it, guys. That is it. This is all the further you want to field strip this gun. Now, you could go in depth, pull the grips off, uh, and really clean this thing up. You don't really need to, not for field stripping. Uh, and just for out, you know, tinkering and, and stuff like that. This is the, all the further you need to field strip it. This is considered uh, complete. So we're gonna go ahead and put it back together. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put the firing pin back in. Now there's a little tab on that firing pin. It will only go in one way. Now you got it right on the first try. And you got it. You have to want to make sure you get it up for the camera. There you go. There you go. Now this is gonna be tough. Okay, this is tough to do. The next thing you want to do is take that screw. You don't want to put it out here for the camera. The way I've the, the way I've figured out how to do it is I take it and I push it in, and then I first want to find out where it's going to go in at. Okay, okay, so it's going to go in right around there. What I do is I choke up on the screwdriver, and I'll wrap the spring and everything like this. And then I'll just push it on it like this. And then give it a little twist like that. And that holds it, okay? Now it's still not locked in place. Go ahead and finish rotating that until it's straight up and down. So push in, rotate to the right. That's it. And it's locked in. There we go. Beautiful. And when it's locked in, that, that will actually come back out and, and it'll hit a recess on the side and won't come out anymore. And that is it. That's your bolt and your toggles all together. Now this whole link thing, this is very important because in your slide, when you're putting this slide on this uh, on the frame, you do not want this little toggle piece right here. This little thing right here. You do not want it to drop down into here. You want it to drop down into here. So you got to be careful about that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the the bolt back onto the frame. And I'm probably going to do this because this is a little hairy. I had trouble with it earlier. And look, it went right in. <laughs> this time it went right in. But yeah, it just slides in. You have you have a set of uh, you have a set of grooves, just like a 1911 or any other pistol. See how it went in? And you just pick that toggle up in the air, and slide it all the way forward. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this hole up, this toggle with this hole, and I'm going to have Noah push that pin through. Wiggle it. That's it. And it goes in till it's flush. It only goes in one way. Uh, it's got like a little, uh, little ex a flat on one side that keeps it from going in further. And you have to take it out this direction. It won't go in any other way. Now this little toggle, this little thing here that I'm talking about, this has to go back here. So this is how I do it. I hold the slide upside down with the toggle back. Take the slide. Go ahead and start it on your frame. Well, you have to have this lock. There we go. <laughs> now take your take your frame, start it on your slides, on your on your slide grooves. Now, when I get it this far, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over this way, so I can actually see where my toggle went. Okay, because I want to make sure. Yeah, toggles. Whoops. Okay, it's got to go right in this little hole right here. Okay. See if you guys can see that. See how it's falling in that hole. Gonna slide right in there like that. Now I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna put the side flat, the side frame on like this. It's just a bitch to do. Oops. Mmm. There it is. Nice it's in. Into a little slide. It's a little yeah. There's a little slot back there. It's got to slide into it. And it, this is machined with precision. Remember, this is Mauser. 
Now I'm gonna slide this back a little bit and he's gonna flip that forward and that is done. Now give it a give it a check in the so they can see it. Everything's working good. Nice, 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 nice. Put it here so we can see it. Um, so that is the German P08 Luger. Now this is the Mauser model 1914. Um, it is a conglomerate of, it says F, it says FN fabric, you know, for uh, FN uh, right here. And then it says Mauser. There's writing on the handle. Is there, what is there? There's writing on the handle. Oh, is there? What's it say? M H. Oh, it's the serial number. Okay, now this gun is a little different, and I'm not sure if I can go ahead and get this to... Oh, by the way, guys, this is 32 ACP, or what they call 7.65 millimeter. Um, the way this is done, this is really tough. <laughs> I'm going to try to go through it without flubbing up. But basically, you want to first... Yes, it's got a heel clip. You want to make sure it has no ammunition in it. Then you want to put the magazine back in. You want to cock this to the back, lock this to the rear. While it's to the rear, make sure it's unloaded, and it is. Then there's a little tab up front here that you push in, and then you want to rotate this that way. Once that's rotated that way, just kind of wiggle it out like that. Once that's out, the barrel will come right out the top like that. Uh, once that's done, what I'm going to do, and this is the tricky part because it's hard to get it right. All I can tell you guys is just to play with it. Now this is striker fired gun, so as the slide's going forward, I have to pull the trigger too. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the magazine down because this is going to start releasing the slide on me. And there goes the slide. As it's going forward, I want to pull the trigger. There, the trigger pulled. Now I want to just, I'm still pulling forward, and I'm gonna pull out on the grip a little bit, or on the uh, on the magazine here a little bit. It's caught. There we go. And just pull right off, just like that, guys. That's it. Now here, this is your uh, striker firing pin spring right here, your striker spring right here. Uh, I'm not, I, you can pull that out, you can leave it in, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, you don't need to take this down any further, uh, but this here is your uh, recoil spring and guide rod. And that is it. This uh, firearm is field stripped just like that. Uh, again, this firearm has a crack right here, and I mean it's completely through the frame. Um, would I trust to shoot it with 32 ACP? Yeah. Uh, it's a very, very low power uh, load, so 32 ACP is fine to shoot. Um, but what I would like to do is actually, it would be cool to just weld this. Weld it, then mill it down. Yes, it's going to ruin its value. It's not really worth much anyways. I think, what? 140 Yeah, like 140 to, you know, $300 in good condition. This is in really, really bad condition and missing parts. So, it's not even a shooter right now. It could be. And even if it was, it's so rusted, it's probably only worth maybe 50 bucks, probably for parts only. Uh, so I would go ahead and weld the, the slide up on it and uh, mill it down and turn it into a shooter. It could be done. So to put it back together, it's in reverse order. Oh, this is the firing pin. It just came out of the channel. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and slide the firing pin back in, just like that. Um, I am going to go ahead and put the guide rod back into its groove into the frame. There's a little groove right here in the frame where that goes into, right? Whoops, it popped out. Damn it. All right, like that. Okay, that's where it needs to be. Now we gotta line everything up and put it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this like this. Okay, get that in there for me. There it goes. Just like that. Just like that. I gotta line the front piece up like that. I'm going to have to push the magazine in now in order to get the slide to go back. So I'm going to push that magazine in so it pushes on something. This this is the part I don't like. <clears throat> Hang on a minute. 
pull that out now. Pull it out. There we go. Uh, it's a bitch, guys. There it goes. Okay. Now, what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and pin it to the back. So we're going to put the magazine back in it. Pin it to the back again. We're going to drop the barrel in it. Oops. It helps to go in the right way. Drop the barrel in it. Then what I'm going to do is put the retainer back in, push it all the way in, slide it over, push the button down, lock it in like that. And <laughs> the uh, heel clip's busted on it, guys, so it's hard to pull this magazine in and out. So now, it's working fine, and it shoots. So That's it, guys. That's all we have. Uh, we have what now? This is the Luger P8. Ruger P08, and this is the Mauser Model 19. 14. So guys, I know this is different than all of our other videos that we do. Uh, it's a, you know, I normally do nothing but Android tech, computer tech, stuff like that. Um, but I figured you guys would want to see this. I mean, this is a very, very rare bird. And I mean very rare, it, especially in this condition. Uh, by the way, my son-in-law is selling this. And I'm not uh, trying to sell this. Guys, don't take it that way. Because I just wanted to let you guys see this thing. It's so rare. Um, I, this is the first time I've really got to hold one of these uh, for any length of time, let alone have it in my own house. Um, but it is, uh, it is for sale. Um, if you guys want to you know, get a hold of me, if you're interested in it, it's not going to go cheap. Um, just to let you guys know, this is uh, it's a collector's item. So, And with it being in the condition it's in, uh, it's, they're going to be looking for a premium. We already have somebody interested in it. Uh, but we're still deciding on, or he's still deciding on whether or not he really wants to get rid of it. It's been in the family for, well, since World War yeah, II. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Um, I want to I wanna thank all my subscribers. You guys are awesome. Make sure that you uh, hit that notification, uh, that notification bell uh, down next to the subscribe button. Um, I think my next video I'm going to do, we're going to go ahead and uh, draw the winners for the uh, Moto E4 and the USB um, uh, SD card reader. So be looking for that. And uh, that's all I have. Oh, we're gonna start making uh, guitar videos. And uh, so if you guys are into guitars, electric guitars, acoustics, uh, ukuleles, things like that. Yes, my family is musical. We're gonna be doing some of that stuff too. Uh, again, I, I told you before, we're going to be expanding the channel, so if you guys are interested in that, uh, also, you know, drop something in the notification there, you know, say whether you like it, whether you don't, you know, give me some ideas, and uh, that's all I have, and we will what? See you in the next video. Yep, see you on the next video.